heavyweight championship of the world, sanctioned by the IBF, IBO, and WBO, and governed by the DVD. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout will be from Italy, Walter Cavalieri, from the United States, Robert Hoyle, and from Germany, Manfred Kuchler. And inside the ring, from the United States, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Tony Weeks. Und jetzt aus Mannheim, Deutschland. Meine Damen und Herren, Dami Gaspadai, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner, De Blaue Eka, wearing black, standing with his trainer, former world champion Buddy McGirt, and officially weighing 115 kilograms. His professional record, 53 fights, 45 victories, including 36 knockouts, with six defeats and two draws. From Baltimore, Maryland, USA, the challenger, the Haras Vodever, Imehalige Boxweltmeister im Schwergewicht, former two time heavyweight world champion, Hassim the Rock. Rota Eka, wearing red with gold, standing with his Hall of Fame trainer, Emmanuel Stewart. Official weight, 111 kilograms. Professional record, 54 fights. 51 victories, including 45 knockouts with three defeats. Aus Kiev, Ukraine, Zai Maliga Weltmeister, two-time world champion, the reigning, defending IBF, IBO, WBO heavyweight Champion of the world, Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Hitchko. Okay, please go, Rockman. You both receive your instructions in your dressing room. Okay, right here is good. Anything below is low. Right here is good. Anything below is low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Let's go. Rockman has said, I want it. He's got it. Let's see if the former heavyweight champ really does want what the current kingpins got. Klitschko looks even more buffed and muscular than has previously been the case. Hasim Rachman at 253, and despite a questionable training camp, looks pretty good. I would have to say, Lennox, that Vladimir has improved his pre-flight or pre-fight blower. He stared at Rachman with what looked like bad intentions throughout that entire ceremony. It was a definite look of disdain. And, uh, you know, the way how this fight started so far it turned out good because... Rock is bent down low, he's got good position, good balance right now. He's looking to get underneath, looking for some opening, but he throws a good jab. And the good thing that he's doing is blocking the jab. He's not getting hit by any immediate jab so far. Vladimir goes to the left hook and lands that, backing Rachman up. Rachman acknowledged that Klitschko throws maybe the best left hook in the division. He has a very good jab as well. And he's beginning to land it now. Klitschko has threatened records for CompuBox numbers on jabs 
in many recent fights, most particularly against Lehman Brewster, when he landed the jab with such ease that had the fight gone a long distance, he might have threatened all records for all weight classes. Rockman is leaving himself very wide open right now for that left hook. Every time he throws that jab, he, he puts that right hand somewhere by his waist, and, uh, you know, later on in the rounds may give him some difficulty. I mean, look right there, he's throwing the jab, but he's keeping his right hand down. Why are heavyweights so reluctant to throw left hooks, Lennox? I don't know. You, I don't know. you, had, a, I think, you I think, had a great one and didn't use it all that much. I think it's a great punch, but, uh, you know, something has to come before it. Obviously, a jab and a right hand, and you always clean up with a left hook. And there, Vladimir led with the left hook. The old Missing. axiom is you don't want to hook with a hooker because if, if he has a better one than you and it lands first, the fight can end. And I think Rachman knows Vladimir's got a better left hook than him. But you do want to jab with a jabber because a jab is unlikely to end a fight. But um, you can disrupt your opponent's even superior jab with your own. And I think, Jim, that's what Rachman's trying to do here. Yeah, and but uh, Klitschko just, just landed a right hand. Yeah, and Rachman made the same mistake that he made with me when he when I threw my right hand. He put out both of his hands at the same time and didn't have no hand back to block a right hand. No, no, hold on, no, stop, 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 stop. Come on, watch back in here. Oh, here we go. Vladimir <laughs> Klitschko said that he was very careful to watch only tapes of the good Rachman, watching the best Rachman performances. But he did acknowledge that he watched the second Rachman Moskaev fight, in which Oleg Moskaev was able to land his left hook with amazing Stop, regularity. I got you, I got you. And of course, everyone in the division has memorized the left hook right cross combination with which he flattened Rachman in fall of 2001. Let, us. Let me tell you, that was right before Christmas, ah. and I had a great Christmas after that. Pull out. Okay, because he's going to catch you pulling out. Close the gap and keep shooting those body shots. Okay? okay. Relax, baby. Nice no, relax. You got it. Nice, so nice relax. relax, baby. Okay, but okay. keep the heat on him. Okay, don't stand and here on. we see uh, Vladimir throwing a straight right hand right through the guard of Rockman, and you don't want to be t you don't want to take too much of this if you were Rockman. Big Let's round for right. Vladimir Klitschko in the first. By CompuBox numbers, 23 out of 50, including 17 connected jabs. Rockman only four of 39. So the Rock was not able to get his offense going as Vladimir Klitschko, as has so customarily been the case, dominated the round with his jab. Stop, stop, stop. Rock needs to go in up, and up. hit Vladimir to the belly and work his way in. Oh, Rock, stop, stop, stop. When he's in, on, he's got to hit to the belly and then come to the head. Rock stop, stop, knows stop, that. stop. The way he'll beat Klitschko if he has a shot is to turn it into a contest of wills. The question is... Will that Klitschko jab sap Rock of his will stop, as this stop, fight stop. wears on before Rockman has a chance to impose his own? All of Klitschko's opponents tend to complain that he holds, and it certainly is no uh, no secret that he doesn't care to fight on the inside much if he can avoid it, and he's perfectly willing to put his arms over your shoulders to make that point. Rockman is getting set up for the right hand and needs to move his position. Cannot stand in one position and let... Vladimir Klitschko set him up for that right hand because he's like a sitting target stop, 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 if that's stop, the case. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. Come on, watch that back in the air. Referee Tony Weeks handled Deloy and Pacquiao last week and made the trip over to be here for this big fight as well. Stop, stop. Now, I know in, in, in the corner of Vladimir, Emmanuel Stewart's going to tell him that to throw that uppercut because he's been ducking right every time Vladimir throws a jab Rockman ducks so that would be a good setup for a jab uppercut left hook the uppercut is a punch that Vladimir has been reluctant to throw sometimes though he landed a couple good ones against Tony Thompson in his last outing at age 32 he seems still to be improving technically and can already be described probably as the best technical fighter in the division. 
You look at this jab. Even when Vladimir Klitschko has been criticized for less than scintillating performances, that jab lands like a power punch. It's blindingly fast. He does not telegraph it. Difficult to time. And it lands with a real thud. There again. Rockman standing in one position. Not throwing any punches. And, you know, this is the position where you need to be first. You need to be first off your guard. Jab, jab, jab. But he's not doing that. He's waiting for Vladimir to jab and set him up. And he's looking to work off of that, but whether he has enough speed and power to do that is the question. In the early part of the round, Rockman takes the right hand there, got to Vladimir's chest about five times, but wasn't Ill really able to do anything while in there. And now, as they fight at distance again, all the advantages belong stop, to Klitschko. Stop. Rockman cannot afford to be hit by that right hand too many times. So, yeah. December 16, it's the premiere of HBO's latest Sports of the 20th Century documentary, Breaking the Huddle, the integration of college football. The next night, Costas Now looks back at 2008, one of the most memorable years in sports history. Relive the best moments of the year with Tiger Woods, Michael Phelps, and others live from New York. What's in that time? Hey, listen, keep your hands a little tight. You got your hands? Every time he comes, he stretch way out here, all the balance. You just create a little space in it and bing, bing, right back. And here we see two examples of Klitschko setting up the right hand. And let me tell you, Rockman cannot afford to be hit by too many of these in this fight. I mean, they're really showing their effects a little bit. And um, you don't want to get hit by this, so he needs to keep up that left hand. You want to pop? Happy box numbers through two rounds. Vladimir Klitschko has landed 34 jabs. Asim Rachman has landed just 12 total punches. Nothing of any real significance so far. So two technically pure rounds for Klitschko. And as Lennox Lewis keeps pointing out, the danger is there that a big right hand could end it. Klitschko bending Rachman off with the left, keeping him at bay. Let him up, let him up, let him up. And this time it's Rock who reaches out and clinches Vladimir as they come together. Rock is being flustered by that jab. That jab is bothering him right now. So he's saying he doesn't want to get hit by that jab. He's keeping his hands up and, and allowing Vladimir to throw his right hand and see if he can work off of it. Vladimir just did an interesting thing. Normally he throws all right hands straight down the pipe like that one. But moments ago, he swept the right hand behind Rachman's guard, much like the right hand with which you knocked Rachman out in November 2001. Rachman's laying against the ropes. He's just being an easy target. You can't do that because if you get hit by a right hand, there's nowhere to go. His, his corner is yelling out to him, get off the ropes, and uh, I think that's a good idea. I think it feels Rachman does. He just doesn't have any chance in the middle of the ring. And uh, maybe he can lure Vladimir into a position where... He can hit him with something with his back on the ropes. Good. Let me tell you, Vladimir is really pacing him with that jab, and there's a lot behind that jab, and it's, snap, it's a snapping jab, and it's, it's really giving him some problems. You get a headache after a while, right? Well, if I was, if I was Rock, I would block that jab. There's no need to get hit by it, because all it's doing is damage, and you know a right hand's coming soon. Well, it's a... If it's a strategy at all, it's a desperate one early in the fight from Hasim Rahman. You see, if I was if I was Vladimir now, I would be throwing a, lo a lot of different array of combinations. I would be punching to the body to mix up the punches because right now everybody everybody in this arena knows the right hand's coming. So show something different. Throw a left hook, throw an uppercut, and and get Rockman's eyes going somewhere else instead of looking for that right hand. And although he's looking for the right hand, I don't believe he can stop it. Is Klitschko being too cautious or appropriately cautious? He's being appropriately cautious right now. I mean, like I said, he needs to mix up the punches, throw some body punches. 
you know, get Rock on to throw, keep his hands down, throw some different type of punches that are in your arsenal, or uh, and, and give, him, give him something else to think about. Rockman pointed out that at six feet seven inches tall, Vladimir doesn't really like to throw body punches because he has to lower his hands and expose himself to possibly being hit. Here's that left hook by Vladimir, which is very effective. And it was another one-sided round. Very smart. He didn't burn up too much energy. Yeah, he's tired. Now, he cannot fight too good at the center of the ring now. You see how he's, when you hit him with the left hook? Before he was missing, his legs is tired now, okay? Stop doing it. You're not doing it. I want a okay. three piece. You waiting for one shot? Don't wait for one shot with this guy. I'll do that, man. Okay, don't let him get three too piece. relaxed. You let him get too relaxed in the zone. I'm gonna press him now. Okay. Three piece. Stay behind I'm the double jab, Rock, and keep the heat on him. You gotta keep the heat on him, baby. Yeah. Okay, stand on the outside is not gonna work. You know we ain't gonna be no decision here. Okay. Three piece. Keep you don't gonna look take for the knockout. Now. Don't look for it. Just let yeah. your hands go. Okay. As he tried to listen to Buddy McGirt's instructions, Hasim Rahman looked very tired, even after only three rounds. Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim. Three to nothing. 30 to 27, Vladimir Klitschko. Jim, I don't know why I scored that third round 10 to 9, because really, it easily could have been a 10 to 8 round Vladimir when it's so big. I mean, you just can't do the rope and dope against Vladimir Klitschko. He'll kill you. Vladimir landing, piling up points with that left jab, coming across with the real good right hands, just doing a number on Rockman so far. Three to nothing, Klitschko based on clean punching. What we're watching here is the best heavyweight in the world. We're watching so far Vladimir Klitschko against one of the 20 best heavyweights in the world in Rachman. He's still probably one of the 20 best, maybe on a good night, one of the 10 best. And uh, we're seeing a wide distance between Vladimir and that non-upper echelon kind of contender at this point. And, you know, I believe that Rockman's still fighting the fight wrong. He needs to put a little more pressure on him. He needs to try and get in there and hit him with some shots, which is not easy because he's trying to duck under the jab. But when he ducks under the jab, a right hand is coming or a left hook. Doesn't really have anything to worry about with the uppercut right now because Vladimir is not throwing it. But well, you heard the discussion in Rockman's corner as Buddy McGirt accurately observed Rock. You seem to be looking for one big shot. And the way to land one big shot is not to look for one big shot, but rather to try to land several. Not only is he looking for a big shot, he's trying to allow Vladimir to tire himself so he, he'll be able to throw one great punch in there. And this is, what, this is what he feels that may happen in the fight. But right now he's getting tagged with a lot of, a lot of shots, which is taking a lot of energy out of him. So whether he's going to have a lot of strength left to be able to throw that, that big shot is the question. Lehman Brewster, before his upset win over Vladimir Klitschko, said he was going to have to try to beat him like Rocky Balboa would, by taking everything he had early and staying in his chest as the fight wore on, which is what happened, and Brewster won by knockout. Maybe Rachman has the same idea here. Weather the storm early. Well, as the fight goes on, you know, Rachman's getting a bit more tired. He's still getting hit by those jabs, and whether he can still... Uh, get away from the right hands we're going to have to see because Vladimir is becoming very sharp with the right hand and with the jab and you know when, when he hits you with a lot of jabs the right hand is going to come sometimes you weather the storm sometimes the storm weathers you I'd say more often than not since the loss to Lehman Brewster in April of 2004 Klitschko has won nine straight fights looking for a 10th win in a row here Looking to get to 52 and 3 in a career which, for his critics, has been defined entirely by the losses and not by the 51 successes. Such are the pitfalls of being the king of the hill. Okay. Baltimore in the house. Come you on. Light that fuse, you gotta start keeping the heat on him. Stop Absolutely. standing on the outside. Don't let the guy get any confidence. 
You gotta make this a dog fight, right? Absolutely. You, Absolutely. Everything you, gotta, make, you gotta make it a dog move fight. Your head and Listen, in right, his hands here. Part. Okay? You got your hands too far apart. Hands here, and let's come in behind the double jab. Just let your hands go. You got it. The left hooks that you were missing before are landing now because his legs are not before he can see good enough. Now he can't see them so good. But that's why you're hitting him with the hooks. Before he was he was getting away, but now you're hitting him with the hooks now. You can step it up a little bit this round. Just get him on out of here. Tommy Box numbers on jabs so far in the fight. Let's go 89 of 172. In other words, he's landing more than half his jabs, 52%. Rachman 11 out of 106. Lennox, I think Buddy McGirt is giving Hasim Rachman good advice in the corner between rounds. But of 53 previous Rachman fights, Buddy trained him for only one. So it's really a shot in the dark as to whether he's going to hear Buddy's good instructions tonight. It's true. Buddy should give him some defensive advice as well and tell him to keep up that right hand because I can see a left hook right hand coming from Klitschko. There's the left hook. There's the double left hook. And the straight right hand behind it. Good call, champ. Jim, you mentioned a shot in the dark, and um, Lennox, you mentioned it off the top of the broadcast, and that's really what Rachman is here for, isn't it? To see if he can land that shot in the dark, and it's the, the kind of odds he's facing. It's, it's going to take a shot in the dark to do it. And let's face it, he does have the knockout power. He, he does throw a good wild punch, and uh, I, I don't think he has enough steam or quickness to be able to catch Vladimir right now. Anything can happen. Lightning can strike, but... Uh, whether he has enough energy to do it, whether he's in great enough shape to be able to do it, is the, is the question. I say he, he doesn't have, have enough, uh, he's not in good enough shape to be able to do it. But he wasn't he, expected to, and, and so far the fight is playing out as most expected. A couple of years ago, in his rematch with Klitschko, when Lehman Brewster was subjected to this kind of jab fest, eventually, Buddy McGirt and the others with Brewster decided it was not worth the continued damage, and he kicked it in. Seymour Ruck tried to attack Vladimir. Vladimir moved back two steps, and, you know, Ruck missed his punches because he's not quick enough on his feet right now to be able to catch him. Before Buddy stopped that fight, the rematch game, he told uh, Brewster and really asked him more than told him, I'm going to stop the fight, okay. He gave Brewster a chance to show that he had some at least desperation left in him, and Brewster didn't. He had the fight beaten out of him. And at a certain point, the question is, will Rachman also have the fight beaten out of him? But he had virtually the same conversation with Paulie Malinagi three weeks ago against Ricky Hatton. And Klitschko is getting closer and closer to doing real damage, or so it would appear, to Hasim Rachman. Well, I'd just like to add, stop, stop, I knocked stop, stop. Rachman out in four rounds. And uh, this is the fifth round, and I and Rockman was at his best. This observation. This is Rockman at his worst. Well, Vladimir is a very fast and pretty big puncher, but I don't think there's any ring critic Lennox who thinks that he is as heavy a puncher as you were. You had the thudding power. He has shocking power. Yes. I got you. I got you. Ah, but we'll never know. We'll never know, will we, Lennox? No, no, hold on. I think some people can form an opinion after watching this fight. Well, what you're saying is you formed an opinion. Ah! Yes, I have. Absolutely. Got a small cut, right eye by a punch. December 23, Real Sports looks back at its most memorable stories of 2008, capped by a roundtable discussion among Bryant Gumbel and all the correspondents. And beginning December 27, HBO Sports will bring you our Boxing's Best of 2008, five memorable fights from the past year. Up first, Antonio Margarito's thrilling victory over Miguel Cotto in July and Manny Pacquiao's razor-thin victory over Juan Manuel Marquez in their March 15 rematch. I'm gonna wipe him off. It's a dog fight with him now, Rock. Okay? You got Hands him. Hands no up, decision. head moving. You got him. Keep that pressure on him. Absolutely. All right. Don't stand on the no outside. Decision. You can't stay on the outside. You took everything you got. Okay? Don't face. stay on the outside. Let's not take no more shots like that, okay? Okay. 
One slight assistance to Rachman that's taking place here is that between rounds periods are longer than a minute. They've been averaging about a minute 10, a minute 15, which means, and it doesn't mean a lot, but it means that Rachman's getting an extra 10 or 15 seconds between rounds to recover. And recovery may no longer be an option as he goes down Three, for the first time on a left-right combination. Five, six, seven, eight. Come to me, come to me. You okay? Yeah. All right, I'm giving you a chance. He still so. looks a bit so unstable on his feet. And that, that punch did hurt him, whether it was a hard punch or not. But it did kind of give him a little bit of cobwebs. Well, to me, it looks like he's both hurt and exhausted. His legs are going away, whether from the accumulated punishment or the absence of conditioning, or both. I've never seen Rockman have the fight beaten out of him like this. Uh, even in his losses, he's fought on until the end. And he... He's been systematically taken apart, and his, it seems his will to fight on has indeed been broken. He's never been in the fight even no, no. for a second. Yeah, well, this is an opportunity for him. The, the, you know, they said to Rockman, here's a fight, here's an opportunity, here's a date. Can you make it? Four, uh, three weeks to train? You know, I would never have taken a fight on three weeks to train. Maybe 16 days. Talking earlier about the difference between you and Vladimir Lennox, it seems to me that... The real difference people see in the two of you, both big, both of the manual steward in your corner and technicians with power, is that you were tough. When you were knocked down, you tried your best to go on. You won some very tough fights over some great fighters. Do you think Vladimir is tough enough? We're not, he's not being forced to show evidence of it here. But do you think he's tough enough to one day be recognized as a great fighter? Yeah, I mean... He's, he's tough now. What he needs to be doing right now, I mean, he's throwing the jab, but he's he's throwing just two different punches. Jab, left hook, right hand. There's no uppercuts, there's no body punches. Now, this is what people want to see. They want to see true boxing. They're only seeing left hands and right right hands and left hooks. But there's uppercuts, there's body punches, there's co different combination punches which he should be throwing. He's known as a cerebral fighter. Are you saying he's not putting the pedal to the metal when he needs to? Well, I believe that he holds back a, a little bit too much where he should really let loose a bit more. Like in this position, he should step. Up, should take his right foot, step over to the side, and, and start punching from the right side. Switch again and go on the left side of Rockman. Right now, he's in front of Rockman. Rockman doesn't have, no, doesn't have to look anywhere, just look in front of him because that's where Vladimir Klitschko is. Stop, stop. Let him up, let him up, let him up, let him up. In round six, after constant sustained punishment for the five preceding rounds, Vladimir Klitschko finally put Hasim Rachman on the deck. Let's take a look at the combination. And it was a combination like, you know, Rachman put yeah, his head down, down he was off balance, and he, Vladimir okay. hit him with put a couple left hooks, which kept it going that way and he just was off balance and he fell down it wasn't a terrific hard shot you want to continue to fight yeah oh to the end okay look but if you continue to take punches like that i'm not gonna let it happen all right uh -huh. hey so you know you got to let your hands go now okay i'm gonna try it off <laughs> okay listen you okay baby yeah okay all right man listen listen let's, let's go ahead and do what we got to do this round all right the referee's not gonna just take no shots like that right we're good Okay, you gotta make it a dog fight, baby. Mm -hmm. Okay? Alright? Don't give the shots. Don't let him lean on you, alright? Okay? Yeah, okay. Let him get back in the reverse. He's gonna hook your hands now, you know that. He's gonna let everything hang out this way. Good, good. Yeah, I know. Get on him quick. was at least a 10-8 round. Vladimir Klitschko was 28 of 68 by Compia Box Count in the round, and Hasim Rachman landed one of 16 punches. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? Okay, Jim, 60 to 53, six to nothing, Vladimir Klitschko. Jim, I think he's on his game. I gotta tell you, he's piling up points beautifully with that left jab. 
mixing in a left hook and throwing a right hand. You got to give him an extra point in round six for the knockdown. Certainly, it could have got the 10 7 he wanted so big. Be as it may, six to nothing. Vladimir Klitschko. Now, Rachman wobbles again after another left right combination. You heard referee Tony Weeks warning Rachman he won't be allowed to continue to take sustained punishment. And here it is. This is over, baby. Oh, this sorry, is done. Vladimir Klitschko, criticize what you will. He's 52 and 3 with 46 knockouts. Not bad. Long tradition in boxing, throughout boxing history, of the dominant heavyweight of the moment taking on a former champion who's no longer at his best but has name recognition and dismantling him. And uh, here is another example of that. One thing for sure if you're going to fight Vladimir Klitschko, you better be in great shape. You better be in shape that to be able to take a punch and go through the complete rounds all the way to 12. If you're looking at your, you know, you're only in shape to go five rounds, you're not going to win the fight. Let's take another look at the action which prompted referee Tony Weeks to step in and protect Tassim Rachman by stopping the fight. <laughs> well, Rachman's got these punches and he's thrown a lot of, a lot of different punches, but I'm talking Vladimir. And, you know, the ref didn't want to see any more punishment because there was no way that Rotman could have won this fight. And he looked very tired. He went over to talk to him in the corner, and Rotman couldn't even hardly say a word. He was definitely tired. You told us in the first round, Lennox, that uh, Hasim Rachman was wide open for the left hook. And uh, that turned out to be a very prescient call. Throughout the fight, it appeared Vladimir could not miss with the left hook. He couldn't miss with the left hook. He was very sharp. I mean, Rockman gave him an easy target, didn't move his head, and was standing in one place. And, you know, it seemed like a lot of steam has, has come out of Rockman. He doesn't have it like he used to have it. And, uh, he, like I said, he took this fight on a couple weeks' notice. Whether he's in good shape or not, he was in, he was in shape to go through uh, at least three rounds, but not the complete fight. You made a great point when you just said moments ago, if you're going to fight Vladimir Klitschko, you had better be in sensational shape and ready to go 12 rounds at a fast pace. Does that, for the moment, disqualify American knockout sensation Chris Ariola, who seems to have a problem controlling his weight? Well, I believe so. I mean, Ariola is a great guy, great fighter, but if you fight him in a 12-foot in a ring, you're going to have problems. But in a 20-foot ring where he has to move around, and use some boxing and technical skills, it's going to be very difficult for him because he's not that type of fighter. So I don't see that being a good fight for him. I think he needs to get some uh, boxing experience, some technical experience, and then he can really come in because obviously it's a good fight to see, but it's not a good fight. You got touched. You landed almost everything you threw. Rate your performance. Um, that's what I have to do in the ring. And Kasim Rachman really got punished and i have to give him respect he was keep coming and uh, i mean every round and to be honest with you i was expecting the corner giving up earlier you looked in your upper body at least physically bigger and stronger than you have in the past have you done anything different in preparation for this fight uh actually nothing different i think that i'm really entering as uh, lennox lewis and many other heavyweights in the history said that over th when you over 30 the heavyweight is getting better that's actually what i feel at my age and at my stage. Okay, uh, your brother came back, beat Sam Peter convincingly. You two are now the top two heavyweights in the world. We understand you said many times, obviously, there won't be a Klitschko versus Klitschko fight. That leaves various contenders, including the man you were supposed to face tonight, Alexander Putvyekin. Do you have any thoughts on an upcoming Putvyekin fight? I think that Kasim Rachman is more experienced than Putvyekin. Putvyekin is a young fighter, and uh, of course, I was expecting Povetkin, that was a wish of Emmanuel and myself, to fight Alexander Povetkin today, tonight. But unfortunately, he couldn't make it because he got injured. And uh, anytime soon, we're going to see Povetkin Klitschko in 09. David Hay has also been calling you out. Uh, Chris Ariola is on his way up. You have some interesting contenders uh, in front of you. What is your preference? Uh, I haven't heard Hebe uh, <laughs> David Hay tonight because he's been loud. And where is he? So, anyway, I think that exciting time in the heavyweight is coming. We got Alexander Povetkin, we got David Hay, we got Chris Ariola, we got uh, somebody else probably. So now it's, getting, it's going to be very excited. 
Vladimir, before I let you go, you and Vitaly talked as you grew up about one day monopolizing everything in the heavyweight division. You two are, in fact, together the heavyweight champion of the world. How do you feel about that right now? Do you wish that you could be heavyweight champ all by yourself one day? <laughs> you know, to be honest with you, I do share with my brother jointly the heavyweight division. And I think it's even more exciting to do it together with my brother than to do it alone. Thank you, champ. My pleasure. Thank you. Jim. Maybe. Uh, but there are still millions out there who yearn for a single identifiable heavyweight champion. And if Vladimir Klitschko is your guy, it was a successful year. Knockout victories over Tony Thompson and Hasim Rahman to get the record to 53, or, two, or 52, I should say, and three with 46 knockouts.